Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about ecosystems some more and we're going to extend our knowledge to also talk about biomes and adaptations. So first, for a little review. An ecosystem is a group of things, abiotic and biotic things, working together in nature. And remember that abiotic means non-living things and biotic means living things. And so when you change the abiotic factors, for example, sun and water, which are very important for life, you also change the actual life in a place. And so that's where, how you get different biomes. So depending on how much sun or water or the weather in a certain region, um, the, that changes the different animals or plants that can live there. And an adaptation is exactly that. An adaptation is a change that a plant or an animal makes to survive in different conditions. Um, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about the different biomes the animals that live in each biome and the plants that live in each biome and at the end we're going to have a little bit of fun to we're going to draw a scorpion and also see how an, a scorpion can adapt in the desert um, so first off let's go over the different biomes starting with the desert so in the desert there's very little rainfall and very little water um, so anything that lives there needs to be okay with that and the temperature changes very much between the day and the night. So it's very hot and then it gets very cold when the sun is out. And in the soil, there's very little nutrients. So that means that the plants can't really grow and they, they can't grow tall like big trees, of course. They have to stay low and just preserve the water that they do have. Now, we already talked a little bit about the plants that live there. They're on the right side and those are the shrubs and the cacti that can go a while without water. Now, for the animals, the animals also need to be okay with those conditions. So these animals need to be able to go a while without food or water, and they need to be able to survive in the extreme heat and the extreme cold. So it's pretty difficult for an animal to survive in the desert. That's animals like camels and the scorpion, the snake and the vulture, there obviously are more animals that live in the desert. But here are some examples of animals that adapted there. The camel, for example, can store water in its hump and go a long time without any water. The scorpion and the snake can bury themselves at night or just stay out of the heat, sorry, during the day, and then come out later in the day when it's nicer to be outside. And the vulture can fly around and it, does just, it just needs to find things that are already dead and then pick up those. And because it's a desert, lots of things die. <laughs> so in the grasslands, there's little water similar to the desert. It's dry and open. And like the name says, it's mostly grass and there's a few trees there. Now onto the animals that live there, or the, sorry, the plants and animals that live there. So like we already said, it's mostly shrubs and grass and some trees. And the animals that live there need to feed off of that. So for example, the zebra, just eats the grass and it's that's called a grazing animal the snake can survive in the grasslands for the same reason that it can survive in the desert and for example other animals like the giraffe can just eat the leaves in the few trees and there's not a lot of competition for that and animals like the cheetah can eat and uh, grazing animals like the zebra for example so it creates a food chain in there now in the rainforest there's a lot of rain and then there's a lot of water, lots of plants, lots of animals. And so there's a lot of nutrients, but, peop ev but everybody's fighting over them. So that doesn't really make it easy to live there. Um, and we'll see how some of the plants, for example, have to deal with that. So starting with the tall trees, they want to grow as high up as they can so that they can, you know, get dibs on the sunlight. And then something like the vine might want to also climb up but it doesn't want to grow by itself, right? So it grows around the tree. And then animals stuck down low, or sorry, plants stuck down low, um, they usually have big leaves to absorb that sunlight. Now onto the animals, there's a lot of different animals. You can start small with crickets and frogs and then get as big as something like a jaguar. 
So we won't go over every single one of these, but for example, something like the, the monkey is able to swing from branch to branch easily, and the toucan can eat all of the insects nearby, um, same with the frog. And so again, there's another food chain. In the tundra, it's probably the coldest, it's very dry, and there's little rainfall, poor nutrients in the soil. So the tundra is pretty rough to live in. Um, and the animals and plants there need to adapt to that. So starting with the plants, it's mostly shrubs and grass. Um, and the, uh, what happens is they can't grow very tall because the soil under them is pretty frozen. So they have to stay low. And the animals also need to be okay with that cold temperature. So for example, the owl and the reindeer and the polar bear can survive the, they have fur or feathers to keep them warm. And the fish can live in the water. Um, and you know, the fish also provides for polar bears, for example. Now, now that we went over the basics of all the major biomes, we want to go a little in depth into a scorpion as an example and talk about how a scorpion adapts to its environment. So first to draw it, you want to start with that oval and next we want to add some pinchers. So to do the pincher, you can just draw a bump, then another bump, and then a long curve. And don't worry if this is the best drawing, this isn't the best drawing ever. Um, you just want to draw something that kind of resembles this so we can talk about it later. And then the second pincher is going to curve into the long curve. Um, now you can add some eyes, and for the legs, all the legs are, they have eight of them, so it's a little tedious, but it's just a small bump, and then you have the large bump, the small one, and then a little tip at the end of the leg. And now, of course, we need to add the tail, um, because everybody knows that scorpions have a big tail. Um, so it's just, again, a few bumps and they get longer and longer, until here you can draw the stinger. So for the stinger, I like to curl up and then curl back around, kind of make like a whistle shape, except it's a sharp whistle. Um, and then now for some extra details, like the lines on the exoskeleton or its body and the little hairs on its leg that helps it sense movement. So here we have a complete scorpion. And what we want to do is talk about how it can adapt to its environment. First, of course, we have a venomous stinger for prey. It has the sensitive hairs to help it detect movement. Its exoskeleton is very hard and it keeps it safe from predators. And the pinchers it can use to grab the prey, hold it down like any other animal would. Um, now, most importantly, it can bury itself during the day or just otherwise avoid the sunlight during the day. And then it'll come out at night when it's much cooler. And it can last up to one, one year with no food or water. Um, and not all scorpions can do this, but in general, they can go a long time without these nutrients. And this is what makes them built very well for the desert. Um, so I hope you guys can appreciate how these animals are, for example, the scorpion, are built especially for their environment and how ecosystems and biomes are all in a delicate balance. And it's important to keep everything, um, you know, as natural as possible because when you change factors like this, like for example, if it started raining a lot more in the desert or one day grass began to grow in the desert, well, that would throw things off and you want to keep things at the natural balance where they are now. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you again in the next lesson.